You've probably heard that Disney pizza is awful, but that's not entirely fair. Disney pizza ranges from terrible to spectacular, and we're gonna rank every pizza in Disney World so you know which ones are worth your time and which aren't worth the bother. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today's video is all about the pizza of Disney World. Now, not all pizzas are created equal, so we're gonna talk about each one so you can find the hidden gems and avoid the wastes of time and money. If you're interested in getting all of our rankings sent right to your inbox, head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash ranking pizza, toss us your email, and we will make sure you get all of this information right in your inbox. Buckle up, because we're gonna talk about every pizza in Disney World, and we're gonna start with one of the most controversial, that puffy pizza. Now, puffy pizza is something we talk about all the time here on the channel. We also call it pillowy pizza sometimes. And there are three places that you're gonna find this kind of pizza. There's Pizza Fari over in Animal Kingdom, Pizza Rizzo in Hollywood Studios, and Catalina Eddie's also in Hollywood Studios. Usually you're gonna find this is cheese and pepperoni or pepperoni and sausage. Sometimes they have vegetable. Over there at Pizza Rizzo, they got vegetable. And they even have a plant-based version over there at Pizza Rizzo as well. The reason we call this puffy pizza or pillowy pizza is that it's so bready. There's just big puffy crusts of bread with not a lot of toppings on here. Now, some people absolutely love this pizza and this screams Disney World for them and they love it. And then there are those of us who would much rather have a different type of pizza or a better pizza if we're going to spend our money and our time on pizza in Disney World. So the puffy pizza, that's going to get ranked at our lowest rung of ranking. Here is our ranking scale. We've got S for superior, and then we've got A, B, C, and D for everybody else. And this one is down there at D. Now, that said, there's one more thing we need to talk about at Pizza Rizzo, and that's the Halloween candy cookie pizza. Now, this guy is a little bit different from the puffy pizza. This is actually a cookie that looks like a pizza. It just came out a couple days ago. It's real cute and real fun. And so that, I'm actually gonna put it a C. Does this count in our pizza rankings? Yeah, you might say no, I say yes, let's put it at a C. All right, moving on into Epcot, we're gonna talk about Connections Eatery next and the pizza there. There's several different types of pizza you can get at Connections Eatery, and one is very standout. This is one that's a little bit different from the others. One of these things is not like the others, and it's the curry spiced pizza. This is a plant-based pizza, and despite its name, it's not actually that spicy. You've got that lime yogurt on it. This is tikka masala, carrot, potato, peas, tomato, plant-based mozzarella cheese, and that lime yogurt. So this is a very different pizza from what you might expect, and it is plant-based, like I said. It is pretty tasty, but the reviews are split for this one. Some love the combo of flavors, and some think it's a bit too much. So there are a lot of different opinions on this one. We think it was nice and soft. It wasn't too soggy. It held up with all those toppings, and a good plant-based option as well. We're going to put this in our B tier. And then there's a bunch of other pizzas on the Connections Eatery list. You've got the meatball pizza and a few others. Those all sort of fall into the C category. They're good, they're passable, again, sort of fast food, okay pizza, but a little bit better than puffy pizza. Now they did just change up the pizza at Connections Eatery. Now for these regular pizzas, the crust is thinner. It's a much, much bigger portion. You've got more of a New York style pizza going on here. And for that meatball pizza, they made the meatballs not quite as huge as the first iteration. So overall, still not the best pizza we've had in Disney World, but a slight improvement on what we had before. Now, are they better or worse than the Pizza Rizzo Halloween candy pizza? Well, Halloween candy pizza, that's super fun. That's a cookie. It's really interesting and cute. But that said, I'm going to put the Connections Eatery pizzas ahead of them because they do have a little more going for them and they have giant meatballs. So that's super fun. And if every comparison I make here is based on meatballs, I apologize in advance. Moving on to Pizza Ponte over there in Disney Springs. Now, this is one of those places that people think about when they think pizza in Disney World because this is an entire restaurant dedicated to it. And there are two main kinds of pizza here. You've got the big slices and the square slices. So we're gonna start with those big slices. These are giant New York style, two plate pizza slices, real thin crust, foldable pizza. If you've been to New York, you understand. Foldable pizza. The pepperoni and the big Roman, these are thin crust. And if you get the pepperoni, every once in a while, Pizza Ponte has some really killer pepperoni cups, which are absolutely incredible. So if you don't know what a pepperoni cup is, it's basically when you've got a really nice thick slice of pepperoni and as it cooks, it kind of curls up into a cup that sometimes if you're lucky cups a whole bunch of that grease. I'm sorry, I love that stuff. So you get really good pep cups here at Pizza Ponte sometimes. So the big Roman, the pepperoni, those big, huge New York style foldable slices, 
pieces. I'm gonna put those on the A category. Those are real good, they're real authentic. I love those. Now, Disney Springs Pizza Ponte also has square slices. These have different toppings. They've got their mushroom one with Fontina cheese and tomato. They've got their artichoke version, again with Fontina and mozzarella. They've got their Parma ham, mozzarella, and ricotta cheese one, and their San Gennaro. Down there is tomato sauce, mozzarella, Fontina, sweet Italian sausage, onions, hot cherry peppers, lots going on on that one. Now these square slicers are usually a lot breadier. It's a lot thicker crust and I don't love them as much. So those square slices are going into tier B for me. They're a little breadier. As I said, obviously I'm not a huge fan of super bready pizza. Sorry, if you are, then maybe these would rank a little higher for you than the curry spice pizza over there at Connections Eatery. I think that one ranks a little bit higher because it's a great plant-based option. Lots of different types of flavors going on in that pizza. So I'm gonna give that one the edge over the square slices at Pizza Ponte. Feel free to argue with me in the comments. I would love it. All right, we have finished Pizza Ponte. We are moving on. And the next pizza on my list is the Boardwalk Pizza Window. Okay, so this is over the Boardwalk Inn. This is a little pizza window right next to the Boardwalk Deli, uh, kind of by Abracadabra, Trattoria, Al Forno, and the Boardwalk Deli over there on the Boardwalk. This has been there forever, this pizza window, and it's always been kind of bad, except there was one little section of time, one little session pre-COVID that they actually made some made-to-order pizzas. They were full personal pizzas, and it was pretty good then, but it is back to just pizza slices. Now you can get a full big pizza, large pizza, but that's not kind of an individual personal made like immediately right there kind of pizza. It's definitely not as good. So unfortunately, Boardwalk Pizza Window, after its brief shining moment of glory, is back to kind of basic at this point. These are not great slices. And this is more of a, if you're just exhausted and there's literally no other food available, this is where you're gonna go. So this is gonna go into our D tier. Is it better or worse than Pizza Fari, Pizza Rizzo, Catalina Eddie's? Super good question. I'm gonna say that it's worse. <gasps> is that right? I think I'm gonna say it's worse than the Puffy Pizza. I didn't realize I felt that way, but I apparently I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. I may regret that later. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens as we continue. Okay, going back into the pizza bucket, we're headed over to Yacht Club next. We're gonna go to Ale and Compass. This is a flatbread. Okay, so we are talking about, let me clarify here what's going on. We're gonna talk about all the pizzas in Disney World. We're gonna talk about some of the flatbreads. There are a few flatbreads that are super boring and not worth your time and they're not on our list. But this flatbread is worth your time. This is a breakfast flatbread over at Ale and Compass. And there's a bunch of different breakfast pizzas in Disney World, just a heads up. I think there's like three of them right now, but most of them are brand brunch only, and those brunches are just on weekends. This one though is every day. It's a sunny side egg, applewood smoked bacon, ham, provolone, arugula, and it is really surprisingly delicious. You don't expect to eat pizza for breakfast, but this is actually really, really good. It's very savory, super recommended. Over there, by the way, at Ale and Compass, they also have some other kind of boring flatbreads. They've got the seasonal market vegetable flatbread. They also have a chipotle barbecue chicken flatbread with white cheddar and pickled peppers and onions. Those are boring. I'm not even putting them in my list, but the breakfast flatbread, really, really good. It's actually going in our A tier. I'm gonna put the breakfast pizza behind those super giant foldable slices. Firstly, because they are so iconic, but the breakfast pizza is really good. It's gonna go in our number two spot at the moment. Sorry, breakfast flatbread. It's a flatbread, technically. Heading over to Disney Springs again, we're going to Earl of Sandwich. By the way, it's very intriguing to me how many places you think would have pizza, don't have pizza. Like there's a lot of fast food restaurants that you would just assume would have some sort of a pizza on the menu. They do not. But then places like Earl of Sandwich, who has a great meatball sub and they don't really need a subpar pizza on their menu, still have a subpar pizza on their menu. Anyway, Earl of Sandwich pizza, you can get pepperoni or cheese. It's basically school cafeteria pizza, which I personally love. For someone who doesn't like bready pizza, school cafeteria pizza is pretty awesome. Like, you know, you, school cafeterias have pizzas on Wednesdays and you buy your lunch on Wednesdays because that's awesome pizza. That's pretty much what this is. I'm still gonna put it in the C category because it's actually not as good as school cafeteria pizza, if you guys remember what I'm remembering. I'm gonna put it above the Halloween candy pizza because again, that's just a sugar cookie. So it's not really what we're looking for when it comes to pizza. So that guy's probably gonna keep moving down, but I still want him in here. But not quite, you know, meatballs. Again, we, we've had this discussion before, not quite up to par with the interesting Connections Cafe, meatball pizza and other, you know, other more high-end pizzas. All right, next it's time to go to Hollywood Studios. We're going to Mama Melrose. This is another flatbread. Again, like I said, we're not talking about all the flatbreads in Disney World. Some of them are super boring. This one's kind of boring. 
<laughs> but we're putting it in here because it is Mama Melrose. It's an Italian restaurant. And so we're going to hit most of the Italian restaurants because we think they deserve to be discussed here since we are talking about pizza. Now, some Italian restaurants don't have any flatbreads or pizzas. Just a heads up. If you don't hear me talk about one, it's because they literally don't have something on their menu at the moment. Anyway, Hollywood Studios, Mama Melrose. That's a table service restaurant. Italian stuff, really weird backstory. Here they only have a margarita flatbread. They've had other flatbreads in the past. Right now, they've only got a margarita flatbread on their primary menu. They have an allergy-friendly carne d'Italia flatbread with pepperoni, sausage, pancetta, four cheese blend, and spicy marinara on an allergy-friendly flatbread. That's for gluten, wheat, and peanut allergies. But the margarita flatbread right now is the only one that's on the primary menu. This one's fine. It's it's good. It's, you know, made to order. They've got a big pizza oven over there. They've got that real fresh mozzarella going on with this one. I'm gonna put this in my B tier, probably because I just... Just, I, I love Mama Melrose, bless its heart. So, because it is a good, fresh, a kind of house-made pizza. It's not like frozen and heated up or whatever. So it's 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 decent. It's fine. It's probably better than the square slices at Pizza Ponte. I'm sorry. I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me on that, but I think it is a little bit better than those because it is fresh. It's a little bit thinner crust. You get the whole pizza. So I'm going to go ahead and put it above that. I think I'm going to have it bump out the curry spice pizza. I think curry spice pizza is going to go down one slot and this is going to go a ahead of that because again, it's freshly made. Yep, I'm gonna bump it above the curry spice pizza. Also because I think the curry spice pizza is a divisive pizza, not everyone's gonna love it. And I think this is going to be more universally beloved than that. So this is gonna get bumped above it. Okay, we're going back to Disney Springs. This next one is gonna be one of your favorites most likely. This is Blaze Fast Fired Pizza. This is a chain restaurant. We actually have one here in my town where I live and people really love it, especially locals. Locals will roll up and wait in line for this pizza, mostly because A, it's made to order. It's kind of like a subway for pizza. Like you get to choose what goes on your pizza. There's four different crust options. So you can get gluten-free crust, keto crust, cauliflower crust, or regular crust. And they're a pretty large size. It's a pretty good sized portion and they're only like 10 bucks. So it's incredible and very cost effective. People really dig Blaze. If you don't have one in your hometown, you should try it out in Disney World. So I'm gonna give this an A. I'm gonna put this in the A tier people really 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 love it and it is pretty cost effective so where does it go breakfast pizza and those big slices of pizza ponte i think i'm probably gonna put blaze between these two breakfast pizza is gonna get bumped down it's good but blaze offers so many different varieties and is so customizable big slices are gonna win out over blaze because again classic new york pizza giant slices i love it so those are gonna win over blaze this one's gonna go right in the middle we are moving on next to sunshine seasons over in Epcot. There they don't have a pizza. They have a pizza roll up. So we give this one a try. I think it debuted last year. And this is basically like a whole pizza just rolled up. It's huge. It's the size of your head. It is giant and it's actually really, really good. The breading there was chewy. It has a little bit of garlic. The mozzarella cheese was nicely melted. You got that pepperoni for that spice. And it's also a walkable snack. Plus it's really big. So it is shareable. So you can save a little money on this one. Pizza a roll up from Sunshine Seasons. You are going in our B category. And frankly, it's better than everything else in the B category at the moment. So it's going right at the front. Okay, next we are headed to Pinocchio Village House. This is another one of those restaurants that's got lots of different flatbreads. Most of them are pretty boring. We're going to talk about those next. But the one we want to call a little bit of attention to is the chicken souvlaki flatbread. Now note, the Pinocchio Village House does cycle through some specialty seasonal flatbreads pretty often. This is their specialty one right now. Now, in the past, they have had flatbreads like the Croque Monsieur flatbread. They've had this roasted corn flatbread that was super killer. Right now, the chicken souvlaki is marinated chicken, tomatoes, cucumber, and tzatziki. And its biggest benefit is that it's a little bit different. You got a little something different in your theme park fast food, right? It's $11.99. We're going to put that one at C in our C category. Definitely better than a roll of sandwich pizza. Probably not beating out the Connections Eatery pizzas. Those are going to be much more reliable for a larger variety of people. Whereas the souvlaki flatbread is going to really just appeal to a certain set of the population. And it's also maybe not going to be there for that much longer. We'll see because they do cycle through. So I'm going to put it after the Connections Eatery pizza, which is going to please just about everybody. Then in front of the Earl of Sandwich pizza, which is fine, but not great. Now let's talk about the rest of those Pinocchio Village House flatbreads. 
flatbreads. These are just your pretty standard fast food flatbreads. They're not puffy pizza. You know, they're better than puffy pizza, but they are pretty traditional. So you've got your all meat flatbread with sausage, pepperoni, ham, bacon, tomato sauce, mozzarella. You've got that gourmet cheese flatbread topped with tomato sauce and a, they call that their gourmet blend of mozzarella provolone and Parmesan, which I don't know how that's really gourmet, but hey, you know what? Pinocchio Village House, you do you. This is in the C category too. I'm going to put it right above the chicken souvlaki. Again, the chicken souvlaki is a little bit more interesting than these flatbreads, but again, these flatbreads are going to be pretty reliable standbys. They're pretty decent. I mean, they are kind of slightly boring, but good size portion, and I think they're going to please a lot of people. So we're going to put that above chicken souvlaki, but again, below the Connections Eatery pizzas. Again, meatballs. What are we going to do? Next up, we're headed to Terralina Crafted Italian. The first one we're going to talk about here is their panoply of pizzas. They've got a bunch of different pizzas here. Of course, this is an Italian restaurant. They've got breakfast pizza on their brunch menu. That's only on the weekends. They've got margarita, artisan pepperoni, spicy capicola, bacon with mushroom, bruschetta, sausage. So lots of different pizza options here. This is going to be kind of your standard table service sit down. We actually did make the dough here. We stretched the dough here. We put the toppings on it and we put it in our pizza oven. This is authentic. This is pretty reliable stuff. I'm going to put it in the B category. It is very traditional. You're going to get that thin crust. You're going to get that nice browning on the bottom from the pizza oven. So pretty reliable pizza here. That's going to go in the B category. And I'm going to have to give it the edge on the pizza roll up. So everybody's moving down. The reason I'm giving it the edge on the pizza roll up is the pizza roll up can be a little bit greasy. It can be a little bit sort of, I'm going to say kitschy. <laughs> so it's not for everybody, but the Terralina Crafted Italian, those are pretty solid pizzas. That's what you can expect from a higher end Italian restaurant. So we're going to throw those in there. And next on our list is something that a lot of you don't know about, I'll bet. This is also at Terralina Handcrafted Italian. These are the pizza fries. Now, I feel like we're cheating a little bit here because they don't really call them pizza fries. They call them Italian fries, but they are really, really, really good. And I'm not going to lie. These are the first ones that are going into our superior category. There's a creamy cheese sauce on here. You know I love a cheese sauce. They have salami on top. I'm sure you can get other toppings added if you want to. Pizza fries can't go wrong. These are excellent. They're very well done. So again, this one's going into our superior category. Let's throw it up there in S. And mostly it's going up there again because this is something new. It's something different. It's something you're not going to see all the time, but it's also really, really good, worth the money, potentially even worth the visit over there to Terralina Handcrafted, which is in Disney Springs and isn't on everybody's list. So consider that. All right, next we're headed. We're still in Disney Springs. We're going to Yasaki. You guys might not know what this place is. This is a Japanese kiosk. It's run by the same folks who run the restaurants in the Japan Pavilion. They have Japanese snacks like harage, fried chicken, and taiyaki, alongside Hawaiian poke bowls and also bao buns. And this is a pizza bun over there. So this is kind of a pizza bao bun with sauce and cheese inside. Again, it's something a little bit different, not what you expected. You probably would never go over to Yasaki and say, yeah, I'm definitely going to get a pizza bun here because that's not something you would anticipate, right? So this is really quite good. If you're a bao bun fan, if you like those cheeseburger pods over there in Satuli Canteen, then this might be a fun switch up on your regular pizza. This is another great way to get your kids to try something new. A lot of times kids don't want to try something that's different from what they have all the time. My kid is definitely that way. But if it's pizza, right, then it could be something that they can experience in a way that's a little bit different from what they have every single night. So introduce them to bao buns this way. Pizza bun, Yasaki kiosk, Disney Springs. I'm really torn between A and B for this one because I love the concept of it being something different, something that your kids might be able to experience that's different from what they've had before and still love it because it's pizza. But is it something that's destination worthy? Probably not. So that would make me want to put it in the B category. I'm going to put it in the A category just because it's different. It's something new. Okay, next on our list, we're going to Splitsville. Okay, so Splitsville is your Disney Springs chain bowling alley, right? But don't discount this one because they actually have a restaurant and it's actually pretty good. The sushi here is really, really well known and the pizza here is really, really well known. So this is a great place to go if, you know, it's raining, you're not going to go to the parks, you're going to head into Splitsville, you're going to bowl, you're going to order some pizza. But this isn't just any pizza. They do have a lot of different varieties. They've got that grilled chicken with barbecue sauce, smoked gouda, mozzarella, cilantro and red onion. You've got your buffalo pizza with diced chicken tenders and buffalo sauce and blue cheese and it's drizzled with ranch dressing. That's called the firehouse pizza. And something that I really, I haven't tried, but I really want to 
gonna try is called Killer Bee. This has mozzarella, pepperoni, mushroom, and torn basil, and it's drizzled with Mike's Hot Honey, which if you put Mike's Hot Honey on just about anything, I'll probably eat it. So Splitsville, decent pizza, fun opportunity to go bowling, but of course you can probably bowl where you live, so you probably don't need to do that on your Disney World trip that you spent thousands of dollars for. But if you do have a rainy day or you happen to be on your Disney Springs day, this is not too bad a place to go and have a meal and have, you know, a, a fun adventure with your family. Maybe if I tried that Killer Bee pizza, I would love it and it would go in the A category, but from what I have tried at Splitsville, I'm gonna say B for this one. Now, I'm gonna put this between Terralina and the pizza roll-up because, again, the pizza roll-up is unique and different and kitschy, but it's not for everybody. Terralina is pretty much gonna be, anybody can get a pizza there they're going to enjoy, and it's gonna be a relatively high-end, well-done pizza. So Splitsville, I think, falls right in the middle where it feels a little more fast foody. It feels a little less artisan, as you would say, but it's not fast food for sure. So I'm going to throw that right in between those two. Next on our list is the Deluxe Resort Fast Food Flatbreads. Here's the deal with this one. These are all going in the same category because there's a bunch of them and they're all sort of the same level of good. So think about the Deluxe Resorts at Disney World, right? These are the fancy, these are the expensive resorts and they all have fast food locations. A lot of these fast food locations do have flatbreads on the menu because of course they're too fancy to have pizza and so they have to have flatbread but they definitely need something that is going to be accessible to a broad range of people staying there so that's where this comes in so for example Gasparilla Island Grill over there at Grand Floridian they have a broccoli and roasted tomato flatbread that has roasted garlic mozzarella broccoli fire roasted tomatoes ricotta over at Cabana Bar and Beach Club at the Dolphin they've got a roasted mushroom flatbread. Primo Piatta at Riviera, they've got their hearth baked pizzas. Oh, see, they actually call them pizzas there. Again, very similar stuff, very similar quality at these locations. And again, they change out regularly. So anytime you go to a fast food joint at a deluxe resort, you'll probably see some sort of a relatively fancy flatbread along with like a pepperoni and a cheese. So those are gonna be pretty standard. Like Contempo Cafe has them, etc. These I'm gonna go ahead and put in B because again, they're pretty decent. They're reliable. Are they authentic? No. I mean, Primo Piatta does say they're hearth baked over there. So that's, you know, something. But again, they're going to be reliable. They're going to probably taste pretty decent. They do change up. So you're going to get variety there, but you'll also get your old standbys. You'll get your pepperoni. You'll get your, your cheese. If you need them, they will be probably available at a lot of these locations. So deluxe resort, fast food, flatbreads. They beat out puffy pizza. I'm going to put these at the bottom of B because they really are between B and C for me. So they're going to go actually below those pizza pond slices because those pizza ponte slices a little more authentic a little more high-end they're really trying to get those more genuine Italian flavors whereas the flatbreads at the fast food locations at deluxe resorts they're just trying to make sure there's something that everybody can enjoy and they are pretty standard okay we are moving on to the Swan Reserve okay so the Swan and Dolphin Resorts are on Disney World property they're run by Marriott they're within walking distance of Hollywood Studios and Epcot and they just built kind of in an annex I guess hotel called the Swan Reserve, which is really more, I think their goal with that is a focus on conventioners, but anyone can stay there. And it's really kind of a boutique kind of hotel going on over there. One of the restaurants they have there is called Amare. Amare is pretty, your pretty standard hotel restaurant, right? Like your, your business hotel restaurant. That's pretty much what it is. There's nothing super incredible here. It's pretty basic. That said, my literal favorite pizza in Disney World is currently at Amare. Not even joking. I went over there really late one night. I arrived at Disney World at like nine o'clock. I went over there at like 1030 for dinner because we hadn't reviewed it yet and I needed to get over there. And oh my goodness, I was absolutely mind blown by this pizza that they have. And it's called the Amare flatbread. And this one's got leek and potato. It's got lardon, which is basically a real fatty bacon, roasted black pepper and Gruyere cheese. The reason why I love it so much is because as you know I used to live in Switzerland I used to have what we call Flemenkouche there which is basically this same pizza it's real real good it's a white pizza it doesn't have a marinara sauce on it there's so much flavor to it with the leek and the bacon and the gruyere so much going on here it feels like a fancy pizza but it's also an incredible comfort food pizza so I absolutely love this thing they call it a flatbread here but it is circular and also on the menu they've got a lot so prosada and a margarita 
Vita over there. Again, they need to make sure that the majority of people who are going to dine here are going to be happy. So they've got your kind of basic little pizzas as well. But that Amare, it's 19 bucks. It is excellent. I would go eat it every day if I could. So there's that for you. Another benefit to Amare is that on most evenings, it does stay open till 11 p.m. So that's a huge benefit because there's not a lot of places in Disney World that will serve food that late. So that's great. Amare flatbread, that's going obviously in my superior category because I love it. It is my favorite thing in the world. So I'm moving the pizza fries over and going to add that to the very front, very top of my list. Don't forget, if you want all of this info in your inbox, head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash ranking pizza, where we're going to send you a PDF of every single one of these rankings so you can gauge the next best place to have pizza in Disney World on your trip. Next, we're headed over to Wilderness Lodge. Wilderness Lodge just introduced two brand new flatbreads to their menu at Territory Lounge. So these are going to be similar to those deluxe resort fast food flatbreads, but they're gonna be a little bit higher end because they are being served in the lounge, which shares a kitchen with the table service restaurant. So the two they've got here, they've got loaded baked potato flatbread, which is bacon, potato, cream cheese, and dill. And they've got a salmon run flatbread for 25 bucks. That's a smoked salmon flatbread. So those, again, fancy, fancy pizza. Uh, the loaded baked potato flatbread, we really, really loved. That was, of course, I mean, all of those words just mean comfort food, right, to everybody. So that's probably going to be something that is intriguing and interesting to just about anyone who loves carbs, right? The salmon flatbread is going to appeal to a smaller group of people. You got to love salmon. That's a stronger flavor. And you got to love smoked salmon. But again, if you are a smoked salmon fan, this is definitely going to be right up your alley. It is excellent. Not a lot of other lounges have flatbreads at the moment. That's why you're not seeing them in this list. So so these two flatbreads, I'm going to add the baked potato one to my A list and I'm going to add the salmon to my B list. Salmon's going to go, I think, between the Splitsville pizza and the pizza roll up. Again, Splitsville pizza is going to be something that everybody's going to find something they're going to love. Salmon is going to be a little bit more specific to people with certain likes and dislikes, but it is going ahead of the pizza roll up because it is a little bit more intriguing. There's a lot more going on on the unique front and the people who love smoked salmon are really going to love this. And what I'm calling my carbs on carbs flatbread, that's going to go up in A. It is going to go at the bottom of the list, though, because it is kind of between A and B for me. Still a little bit enamored with that pizza bao bun and all of its offerings and all of the life changing effects for your kids, potentially. <laughs> so I'm going to put the baked potato flatbread after that one. OK, we have gotten to the part of this video that I know you've all been waiting for. Don't worry, we've still got a lot more to go. <laughs> <laughs> but we are headed to Via Napoli in Epcot. This is kind of the pizza mecca for uh, Walt Disney World. Everybody who talks about pizza that's good in Disney World talks about Via Napoli. So we've got three entries in our Via Napoli pizza options. We've got their Quattro Fromaggi, their Prosciutto e Melon. I'm not saying it with an Italian um, accent, I apologize. And then we've got all the others, right? So let's talk a little bit about Via Napoli first. This place is super quality pizza. This this is in Epcot's Italy Pavilion. It's a huge restaurant. There are three giant brick ovens where they fire these pizzas that you're ordering. And those ovens are actually themed to volcanoes in Italy. So they're super cute. Uh, uh, cute. They're, I mean, they're really kind of scary. <laughs> but it's a really fun design element. And the pizza here is gonna be thinner crust. It's gonna be hand tossed. They're not like a chip. It's not gonna crunch like a chip or anything like that. It's gonna be more New York style, but really just, just Roman style. I, I do believe they still import the water for their crust here because they want it to be very similar to the water that you're going to get in Italy that's gonna go into the crust. So lots of detail, lots of imagineering, so to speak, going into these pizzas. Anyway, they're really, really good. We're gonna talk about Quattro Fra Maggi first. This is my personal favorite. I know it's not everybody's favorite and that's okay. On their Quattro Fromaggi, you've got mozzarella, parmesan, fontina, and provolone. Now, usually if you get a Quattro Fromaggi, you have some sort of a blue cheese going on. And here you do not. I think it's just because there are so many people who aren't blue cheese fans. It's kind of unfortunate that you don't have that extra flavor to it with the blue cheese, but alas, it's still a really good pizza. It's a white pizza, so there's no marinara sauce. But that Quattro Fromaggi, I'm going to put that in the superior category. I really, 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 really like it. One of my favorite things to eat in Disney World, honestly. I'm going to put the Quattro Formaggi right there in between the Amare flatbread and the pizza fries because 
because I do love it, but I don't love it as much as that Amari flatbread, which of course has that nostalgic feel for me. The prosciutto e melon, I know that this is a favorite for a lot of folks as well. This one is gonna go in superior too. It's not my cup of tea, but it's different flavors and you're gonna get on a lot of different pizzas in Disney World. And again, it's done really well. I'm gonna put that after the pizza fries because like I said, it's not my favorite personally, but I know a lot of people love it. So it is still staying in the superior category, but it's going to be at the bottom of the superior category at the moment. Now, the next level is the other pizzas over at Via Napoli. Quick note, by the way, on the sizes of pizza you can get here, you get an individual size, which is plenty of food for one person. You can get the large, which is $40, and you can get the mezzo metro, which means half a meter. It's a big, big, big pizza. It's a good shareable pizza. And it's only 55 bucks, which I know you're like, you, I can't believe you're saying only there, AJ, but if you have a big group of people who can all share the cost, then can actually a pretty affordable deal for a larger family. But yes, that said, this is pricier pizza than you're gonna find just about anywhere in Disney World. Uh, you know, a large pizza at 40 bucks, that's very expensive. So just a heads up on that. But hey, we just talked about that salmon flatbread, which is definitely a one person pizza up there at Wilderness Lodge and that's 25 bucks. So, you know, it's gonna be pricey no matter what. All right, so the other pizzas at Via Napoli, of course, they've got pepperoni, they've got just straight cheese, they have their artichoke pizza. So there's lots of other options here. I'm gonna put those in the A category because I know they're not beloved to me the way the Quattro Formaggi is. And I know they're not beloved to a lot of other people the way that the salmon and prosciutto is. So I'm gonna put them in A, but I know some of you would put these in superior as well. So I will say that. Now the rest of those Via Napoli pizzas, I'm gonna go ahead and put them right at the top of A because really they could pass over into the superior category without a doubt. So those are gonna be right there in between superior and A. They're going right at the top and I don't think they're gonna move from there. Moving on next to, oh goodness, we're going from the top of the pile to the bottom of the pile on this one. We're going to Terra Treats in Animal Kingdom. Lots of you don't even know what that is. That's just a little kiosk. They call it Terra Treats because when it first opened, they served plant-based items mostly. Now it's it's kind of gone through several iterations. Now it's got pizza on the menu. These are just regular pieces of pizza. They're nothing to write home about. That's honestly gonna go in my D category, mostly because it's not even worth going over that I get pizza. If you're gonna get a D category pizza in Animal Kingdom, head on over to Pizza Fari, right? Cause then at least you get to sit in those cool dining rooms. So this is going in the D category, Terra Treats. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it below the Boardwalk Pizza window. Cause it really is nothing to write home about. In the Boardwalk Pizza window, at least you can get a big old pizza and, and that has the potential of saving you when you're super hungry late at night. Terra Treats, there's so much better food to eat in Animal Kingdom. Please do not spend your time and money on this. All right, going next to Disney Springs. This is a different entry. It's kind of like the bow bun situation. Wetzel's Pretzels has a pizza pretzel. Did you know that? I don't know if you did. It's basically their standard Wetzel's Pretzels pretzel that they've put some cheese and pepperoni on. This one's actually not too bad. I really am a big fan of Wetzel's Pretzels. <laughs> I especially love their cinnamon, their sinful cinnamon ones, but this is an okay option. And if you're looking for something a little bit different, or if you've got kids who love pizza and you're just so, so, so tired of having regular pizza, this is a good option for that as well. This is going to go into our C category. I'm going to put it between the Pinocchio Village House flatbreads and the Chicken Slovaki flatbread over there at Pinocchio. Again, this is probably going to please more people than that Chicken Slovaki. It's got a little bit of a unique aspect to it, but the Pinocchio Village flatbreads are kind of a reliable, boring option. Whereas if you get the pretzel, you may be like, oh, this wasn't as good as I thought it would be. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in between those two. Okay, next we're headed back to Via Napoli, but we're going outside to Pizza Al Taglio, which is their <laughs> very confusing pizza window that literally is right there off of Via Napoli, but it's not the same pizza that you get at Via Napoli. This is a little bit thicker slice. It's a square slice. It's pretty good pizza, but Pizza Al Taglio is not open very often. It's really only open during very, very busy times. But again, don't be fooled into thinking this is gonna be Via Napoli pizza on the go. It is absolutely not. These are closer to that cafeteria pizza, closer to the thicker, breadier Pizza Ponte slices, which by the way, Via Napoli, Pizza Ponte, Maria and Enzo's, those are all actually run by the same company, heads up. So these may very well be Pizza Ponte slices, I'm not sure. These have great pepperoni cups. I really, really have gotten good pizza here, but again, 
again, it's a bit too thick crusted for me. Definitely not the same as that Via Napoli option. So I'm gonna put this in the A category. It's a good kind of time saver. If you are in Epcot, you wanna eat something quickly. There's no festival on right now to go to festival booths and, I, and it's super busy and I need something to eat real quick before I go to my Cosmic Rewind Lightning Lane. This is a good option for a quick grab. Very opposite of Terra Treats where that's not a great option for a quick grab. You There's much better stuff to eat in Epcot. Whereas this is acceptable. This I will I will let you off the hook if you get this pizza instead of walking all the way over to refreshment port to get poutine. So is it better than the breakfast pizza? Probably not. So I think that's where it's gonna go between Yasaki Pizza Bao Bun and the breakfast pizza at Ale of Compass. Okay, moving on, we're headed to Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill. This is over in Disney Springs. It is extremely underrated, by the way. I think Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill has some delicious food. You can usually get a reservation here if you're over in Disney. Disney Springs. There are so many great places to eat in Disney Springs that even if you can't get a reservation at some of the top tiers, these like secondary tier restaurants are honestly just as good. They just may not have the same like water view or experiential elements to them. So Wolfgang Puck, of course, as you know, he's a celebrity chef, very, very well known for pizza. He's always got some sort of pizza element in most of his restaurants. And that's the same here at Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill. You got a lot of, you got a whole pizza section on the menu. Over there right now, you've got breakfast pizza, for their brunch situation. You've got wild mushroom, fennel sausage, pepperoni, Bianca pizza, which is goat cheese, ricotta, potato, and olive salsa verde. Barbecue chicken over there, which is one of their famous ones. I know the barbecue chicken has been on like every Wolfgang Puck menu that I've been to the restaurant of and smoked salmon as well. So these are good pizzas. These are solid, reliable pizzas, y'all. If you're going to Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill and there's literally nothing else on the menu that's appealing to you, which is surprising because there's really good food there, a pizza will be a decent choice. I'm going to put it in B. I'm going to put it above the Terralina pizzas because it's definitely better than Splitsville pizza. And I think Terralina is a little unreliable enough. Wolfgang Puck Pizza kind of has a cachet around it. It's It's been really good. It's been really good for a long time. It's across several different locations. So I think there's a consistency there that we have to reward. So that's going to go right there at the top of B. All right, headed over to the Contemporary Resort. We're going to California Grill. This, as you know, is a signature restaurant, kind of high-end, fancy restaurant, one of the most expensive restaurants in Disney World. They do have a pizza on their menu. It's on their appetizer menu, and it's a duck a l'orange pizza right now. Now, California Grill has always had flatbreads on their menu. They're usually sort of in there as a reliable option for pickier eaters as an appetizer option. But they've always been on there and they've often changed out pretty regularly. Sometimes they're excellent. Sometimes they're just, yeah, okay, that's fine. Right now, the Duck All Orange has been on the menu since they switched the menu to a prefix menu. And it's actually really, really good. It's house-made, artisanal style. They call it Duck All Orange. There's Duck Prosciutto and Duck Confit, both. There's pickled shallots, there's orange black mission fig jam, cherry compote on there, aged blue cheese. So there's another thing that some folks might not like, that it's a blue cheese situation. And then there's arugula. So is this going to be acceptable to everyone? No. Is this going to be a picky eater favorite? Absolutely not. But it is pretty high end. It is pretty good. Now, quick note for you here. If you want to go to California Grill and not pay the prefix meal price, you can, on a first come first serve basis, go sit at the bar and the duck all around pizza is something that you can order a la carte at the bar. So if you're interested in trying this, but you don't want to pay the big bucks prefix menu price, you can try to get a seat at the bar. I would suggest going early in the night rather than later, especially not close to the fireworks because obviously all the bar seats will be taken at that point. So instead of paying 89 bucks for the prefix meal, you can pay 23 just for the pizza if you are sitting at the bar. This is going to go in my A category. It is really, really good. And I got to reward California Grill for some consistently good flatbread options. Again, it is a very, very high level restaurant in Disney World and they do a, a pretty good job. California Grill in general has been hit and miss for me. Sometimes the A team is on, sometimes the B team is on, but this is a pretty reliable, pretty good pizza if you're a blue cheese fan, if you're a duck fan. So it's going to go in my A category. I think that some people will not enjoy this pizza, so I'm scared to kind of put it at the very tippy top of the A category. The other things we have at the top, the Pizza Ponte slices via Napoli, Blaze, Fast Fire, those are all 
all going to be universally enjoyed. I think anybody can like those pizzas. This one is much more specific and certain people aren't gonna like it, but I also wanna give it credit for being a pretty high-end situation and, and very imaginative. I'm gonna put it between Blaze Fast Fired and the Breakfast Pizza Ale of Compass. All right, next up on our list, we are headed to Il Molino at the Walt Disney World Swan Resort, which is, as I mentioned before, those are run by Marriott, but they are on Disney World property. They've got lots of different flatbreads. This is another one of those Italian restaurants, so they've got a bunch of flatbreads on their menu. Now, Il Molino, I posit as the best Italian restaurant on Disney World property. I think it's excellent. I love their pastas. I, I think the vibe there is very relaxing and fun, and I think they do a really, really good job with their with their menu. So I'm going to put these in the A, B category, just because I think it's a reliable and consistent flatbread option. So quick note on the different kinds they have on their menu right now. Again, these will probably change out. They've got their standard margarita. They've got a rustica, which is tomato sauce, mozzarella, and sliced pepperoni. They've got a bosco, which is tomato sauce, mozzarella, Italian sausage, mushrooms, and truffle oil. And they have a quattro formaggi on here too, which is fontina, pecorino, mozzarella, and an herbed ricotta, which some people are not going to like that ricotta, just a heads up. If you're not a cottage cheese fan, ricotta might not be your favorite. It's topped also with artichokes, roasted garlic, and arugula. So price range here, $19 to $21, pretty standard for flatbreads. Anyway, going to put this one in probably the B category. It's just an Italian restaurant, pretty standard, but reliable flatbreads on that one. I'm going to go ahead and put it right after the Splitsville pizza, I think, between smoked salmon and the Splitsville pizza. The reason why Splitsville wins in this case is that that's a place that you can also do other activities. You can go there and bowl. It's not as far out like the Swan. You kind of have to go. You have to park. That can be a bit of an issue in terms of you don't have your own, your own car. Of course, you can also walk there from Epcot or Hollywood Studios, but some people might find it a little bit of a hassle to get to that restaurant. Whereas Splitsville, anybody can get to Disney Springs anytime and it's pretty, you know, they pretty much know what's going on there. But that said, from the quality of the actual pizza, I think that the pizzas at Il Molino are just as good, if not a little bit better than Splitsville. And again, they're going to be more probably universally appealing than the smoked salmon at Wilderness Lodge. All right, we're headed over to Gico next. Now, Gico is an Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's one of my very favorite restaurants in all of Walt Disney World. This is another California Grill situation. This is a signature restaurant, a fancy restaurant. They always have a flatbread or two on the appetizer menu, and it's always pretty fancy. This is another duck one right now. And again, this will change out. This one's duck confit and honey raisin flatbread. Pretty cheap though, it's $16. So that's much less expensive than you're gonna pay over at California Grill. This is preserved duck rocket, which is of course a type of lettuce, toasted chickpeas, mozzarella, plump raisins, harissa, and spiced honey. So very, very interesting flavors here. Definitely not going to be for picky eaters. But if you are someone who's looking for interesting flavors for something unique that's still in a recognizable form, this is a good option. I'm gonna put this in my A tier because it's kind of along the same lines as the duck a l'orange pizza. Not universally accepted, but still interesting and give them props. So I'm gonna put that right underneath the duck a l'orange pizza. And again, these things will switch up, especially at these signature restaurants. They're gonna switch up their menu pretty regularly. So this particular pizza is probably not gonna be there if you go next year. They will change the menu by then. But that's where the reliability of the restaurant kind of comes into play here in these rankings is kind of whatever flatbread Gico is gonna decide to do, I would give it an 85% chance of being delicious and worth getting. And again, 16 bucks is not expensive for a flatbread at a signature restaurant. Moving on, it's Trattoria Al Forno time, y'all. This is another Italian restaurant. There are lots of Italian restaurants in Disney World. It's over at Boardwalk Inn. It's a table service restaurant at Boardwalk Inn. They do a good variety of Italian options. Again, this is that restaurant that's been like three different restaurants in the past few years. It, it started as Spoodles and then it moved to being Cusina, which was a Greek restaurant. And now it's Trattoria Al Forno. It's been this for several years though. So I think it's going to kind of stick. The first thing I'm going to talk about at Trattoria Al Forno though, is believe it or not, a superior quality pizza. And you're going to laugh. It is the Kids Mickey Pizza. This is my friends, the only place you can get a Mickey shaped pizza on Disney World property at the moment, which is shocking because you would think that everybody, that, that just counter service places would have Mickey shaped pizza. They do not. So this is on their kids menu. It's actually a pretty decent pizza, but again, it's super, super basic. It's just cheese and marinara sauce and you can get pepperoni on it if you want. Those ears are made with cheesy garlic bread, which is awesome. So this is going to be a superior quality simply because it's Mickey shaped and it's the only place you can get a Mickey shaped pizza, which is wild, but it also is a pretty decent 
pizza, very basic, but I gotta give props for the Mickey ears. So it's gonna go at the bottom of my superior category, but it's still going in there. And you can argue with me in the comments. This is, you know, this is Disney food vlog. We gotta give props for someone actually putting Mickey ears on their pizza. But moving on to the rest of those pizzas at Trattoria Al Forno, we're gonna lump them all into one category. Again, this is a situation like El Molino, a situation like those other Italian restaurants where they've just got, you know, a bunch of pizzas, a bunch of flatbreads or whatever, like Terralina, you know, they've got, you know, they're doing them pretty well. They're putting them into a pizza oven. They're making them to order. So they do a pretty good job. Over at Frateria Al Forno, they've got pizza carne, which is prosciutto, salami, sausage, capicola. They've got Bianca, which is ricotta again, Italian oregano, garlic, that white pizza. Sicilian has pecorino and sweet onions. Pepperoni is just plum tomato sauce and Parmesan with pepperoni. Margarita, they also have a sunrise breakfast pizza, which is scrambled eggs, bacon, ham, sausage, bell peppers, and cheese when breakfast is happening here at Trattoria Al Forno. So again, these are pretty good. I like that they have that one outlier with the pecorino and sweet onions. Good for them, but everything else is pretty standard. Again, I'm gonna put this in the B category. This is the same situation here with like the Wolfgang Puck pizzas, the Terralina pizzas, the Il Molina pizzas. Hard to kind of gauge, but they all are gonna be in that little amorphous high B area because they do a good job. If they didn't do a good job, they couldn't stay afloat. They're Italian restaurants after all, and it's Disney. Disney worlds. There's a lot of competition. So they're they're pretty decent. They're pretty basic. I'm going to put Il Molino above Splitsville after all, and then put Trattoria Al Forno after the Il Molino pizza. So let me move this around. Why am I doing that? Mostly because I just love Il Molino. I think they do an excellent job and I want to give them props for that. Trattoria is fine, but it's not as consistent or reliable or as kind of high end as I feel like Il Molino is. All right, moving on. We are at the resorts again, and we're going to finally talk about the value and moderate resort fast food pizza. You've been wondering this was going to come in, right? And it's really interesting. If you look at the pizza menus across Walt Disney World, the menus at the value resorts and the moderate resorts, counter services and quick service locations literally are the same exact menu. It's large cheese pizza for $17.99, large pepperoni pizza for $18.99, super slice of pepperoni pizza for $8.99 and super slice of cheese pizza for $8.49. Literally the same menu. This is all the same pizza. None of it is very good. <laughs> <laughs> but it is reliable for a late night eat or if you, you know, you haven't fed your kids all day and they desperately need food. This is something you can get, but I think this is always going to be kind of your last option. There's so much better food to eat in Disney World, so don't go for this right off the bat. If you have a super, super picky eater kid and they don't want to eat anything else at the food court, you know, of course, absolutely, you're going to go ahead and grab this, but it is extremely basic. We're talking like, you know, big box store type pizza, mass produced, not great stuff. There's a lot better stuff to eat. So this is going in my D tier, although I know there, I, I've got a lot of devoted fans to value resort counter service pizza out there. But let's be honest, it is kind of a nostalgic devotion, right? It's like, well, we got home from this great day at Disney World. We're super hungry. We grab a pizza at the counter service at the value resort and we go back to our room and we eat it. And it's like a great time with family. So it's a nostalgia driven love and not an actual it's good pizza pizza driven love. I think we can all agree on that. So I'm going to go put it in the D category, but it's going to go at the top of the D category because bless its heart, it is something that we need to stick around. Like we need to have it because when desperation hits and you need a pizza, this is where you get it. So that's our list. Those are our rankings. Let's take a look at the final grid. We got a lot of those in A and B. I'm surprised we didn't have as many hit C. I'm, I'm, I'm apparently being very generous to a bunch of these pizzas because people generally think the pizza in Disney World is pretty bad. But again, you can see the B section is going to be that Wolfgang Puck, Terralina, Il Molino, Trattoria, Splitsville, all those restaurants that have a bunch of pizzas and they do them pretty well. I mean, it's pretty decent, pretty reliable, but also usually pretty basic. Nothing kind of out of the ordinary or exciting happens at those locations, but it's pretty reliable stuff. So I think that's why there's so many in there in the kind of right there, middle of the road pizza. And that's pretty much what I'd say about Disney is they do have pretty middle of the road pizza. There are some pizzas that I would say, please don't ever eat that. Eat something else. There's so much better stuff in Disney World. But if you have pizza fans, stick there to the superior, the A, and the B, and you're going to do just fine. And one more reminder, if you want all this info via PDF right in your inbox, just head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash ranking pizza, and we can send it to you right away so you don't have to take notes or anything like that. So thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.